Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. My name's Tom, and I'm your host. Thanks for being here tonight. In this evening's story, TK will be reading to us as we take a trip to the country and spend the afternoon wandering around a charming antique store. We don't know what treasures we'll find there, but it's okay for you to fall asleep before you see them all. Remember, you can always listen to this story again some other time. Let's settle in for a good night's rest. Begin, as always, by ensuring you're cozy and comfortable in bed. Take a brief moment to check in with your body, just noting if any tension seems to be held in certain areas, and giving yourself permission to let that go bit by bit. With your eyes closed, Take a nice breath in through the nose and gently breathe back out. And as you ease into a steady rhythm, just begin to visualize an open road leading you far away from any worries responsibilities, or problems. Driving along this road, still breathing in and out with the same relaxed rhythm, you see the smooth tarmac ahead, the painted white lines dotted along the center of the route and the way the road stretches and snakes through an open landscape for miles and miles to come. Up above, the sky is clear and the sun glows with its nourishing warmth. With each deep breath and each turn of the wheels, You feel any burden of thought or worry fading and fading, traveling on with an ever-increasing sense of freedom and tranquility. As you drive down this scenic, relaxing road, you decide a little adventure might be nice. You have an entire afternoon ahead of you, and on a day like this, it promises to be a lovely one. This is where our story begins. A soft, warm breeze drifts through your car window. As you turn onto the twisting two-lane highway that will take you further into the countryside, you appreciate the lazy feeling of the sunshine on your face as you lean back against the headrest of your seat and close your eyes. A friend of yours offered to drive, 
and you accepted gratefully. You'd prefer to be a passenger today and enjoy relaxing as the car passes by the tranquil country scenery. The asphalt road is quiet underneath you, slipping by with just the occasional small bump where a crack has slowly worked its way across the surface. So far, your ride has gone smoothly, and there hasn't been any traffic to slow you down. It's shaping up to be a perfect afternoon. Opening your eyes again, you reach for your travel mug, which is snugly lodged in the cup holder to your left. Your warm drink is finally cool enough to sip, and you smile as you take your first taste. It's just the way you like it. You turn your head to the right and watch the split rail fences go by outside your partially open window. They seem to move slightly up and down with the rise and fall of the road. You are traveling through peaceful, open countryside. Thanks to abundant rains, the grass is a vibrantly lush shade of green in all directions. You pass quaint roadside signs advertising the occasional farm stand. Once in a while, a small church with a little steeple will appear. These modest rural chapels all look as if they've been there for a hundred years. They're a familiar part of the scenery. As countless fields go by, you see horses cantering behind low fences. You and your friend drive past a brightly painted red barn that's not set too far back from the road. It must have been here when this byway was nothing but a track for horse carts. The barn has a lovely small pond next to it, and the owners have taken the trouble to build a decorative arch bridge over the water. You can see a mother duck paddling in the water with five or six ducklings happily following behind her. Two goats are grazing calmly nearby. Up ahead you see that you're approaching an elementary school. As you get closer, you notice there are people outside, setting up a number of booths and hanging banners between the trees. The signs say things like dunking booth and ring toss. A small fenced area in the shade 
has a sign that says, Petting Zoo. It looks as if a local fair may be taking place here soon. In your mind's eye, you see a roll of paper tickets that read, Admit One. You smile to yourself. It could be fun to go to the fair and roam around with those tickets, trying your hand at all the games. And then, the school is in the rearview mirror, and you and your friend are approaching your destination. The Country Antiques Market. It's not even in a town as much as a house and grounds. Sitting at the intersection of two roads with a stoplight. In fact, the market almost appears to be its own town. A large, rambling house It's surrounded by outdoor stalls. The house has a huge wraparound porch that is piled with old furniture. Behind the house and all the market stalls is an unpaved parking lot. You turn at the stoplight and carefully coast into that area. Because it's a late summer weekday, the market is fairly quiet, which is just how you like it. While other people are at work, or perhaps off on a vacation, you will take the chance to wander through the charming old house and the market stalls without any plan at all. If you're lucky, you may find an unexpected treasure that inspires you to take it home. You don't have anything particular in mind, but that's half the fun. With so much to discover, it's hard to know where to begin. You and your friend head across the parking lot toward the rambling antique house. It's covered in wooden shingles that have been painted a soothing forest green. The roof and all the shutters are black. There's a stone courtyard in front of the porch that has been turned into a cafe area. A bakery truck stands off to the side, offering a tantalizing menu of treats, as well as coffee. You and your friend proceed through the courtyard, walking between small, round tables of people chatting over a snack and a drink. When you reach the wraparound porch, you realize that you'd like to look at some of the furniture there before going inside. You are immediately drawn to a lovely sideboard. In 
in the center. It has three deep drawers. On the far right and left sides, there are doors that swing open to reveal storage space inside. The original pendant-style pulls are still there on the drawers and the cabinet doors. The sideboard stands elegantly on carved legs, as if it might come to life, like a character from Alice in Wonderland bounce a little on its bowed legs and wander off. Smiling to yourself, you move across the porch. You pass a set of six wooden dining chairs with woven cane seats that are stacked on each other. Some upright, and others upside down on top. As you round the corner of the porch, there is a row of pie cupboards. Some of them have glass, and others have punched tin inserts in their doors. You imagine all the special things you would put inside if you had such a cupboard at home. A bit further on, you come to an area with multiple dining tables. Some of them have heavy, elaborately carved legs, whereas others look like they might have been used just for ordinary meals in someone's kitchen nook. Your favorite ones are the small tables with drop leaves that can be opened to seat more guests and then closed again to save space. What a clever idea that was, you think? You stop to open and close the leaf of a nearby table and test the hardware underneath to see if it still works. It does. And the fading red paint is so charming you imagine the table set for breakfast in a sunny bay window and slowly stroll on. Coming to the end of this expansive porch, you encounter a whole stack of leaning iron bedsteads. Most of them were originally painted white. That paint is now chipping and flaking, giving them a distressed look. Some of them appear to be brass. Those pretty golden frames would shine right up with a good polish, you think? You run your fingers over a twin bed that has curlicues and daisies elegantly twining their way across it. It would be just perfect with a fluffy white down comforter and big soft pillows. Having reached the end of the porch, you look back at your friend who is also admiring the iron beds. Then you motion with a nod toward the doorway, indicating that you'd like to enter the house. 
your friend smiles and follows you as you pull the door open carefully and step inside. You are in a large room that was probably some sort of living room or salon at one time. The wood floors have very wide planks and look quite worn, as if hundreds and hundreds of people had walked across them. In the center of the ceiling, there is a plaster ceiling rosette and a chandelier hangs gracefully beneath it. Around the room, other chandeliers are suspended from the ceiling. They are not lit, which tells you they are on display for purchase. The entire space is filled with tables that are covered in a variety of wares. China cupboards stand here and there, dividing the room into sections. Almost everything you see in this room is for sale. You begin at the table nearest to you. It is absolutely covered in piles of vintage napkins and tablecloths. Many of them are white, with some sort of lace or crochet edging in white or in elegant pastels. Most of these fine linens have yellowed modestly with age, which only increases their charm. There are also some cheerful floral prints to be found. You pick up a set of napkins that are light orange with white and pink flowers on them. The cotton is lovely and heavy. They would wash up beautifully and probably not even need ironing. You smooth your hand across the napkins and set them carefully back on the table. As you circle the room, you look at the dishware displayed within the standing cabinets. There is so much talk nowadays about how people don't want to bother with fancy dishes anymore. But these plates, cups, and saucers exude such charm. They inspire you to consider hosting a dinner party or having friends over for tea and cake. Some of the plates feature the traditional blue and white pattern so many people associate with fine china. But there are other patterns that are much more colorful. You see floral motifs edged with gold, as well as demure white-on-white -white plates that have platinum edging. Nearby, a round table is set with a purposely mismatched grouping of dishware. Your friend tells you that they've been inspired to revisit the odds and ends in the cabinet at home and put together some new table settings. This visit to the antique store is giving you both some great ideas. One cabinet contains numerous charming vintage salt and pepper shakers. 
Some are in elegant porcelain patterns, while others look more like cartoon animals or even pieces of fruit. You spot a small pair of decorative glass ones that would be perfect on the red drop leaf table you just saw on the porch outside. A person could furnish an entire kitchen in this place. Your friend is right behind you as you go through the doorway into a small adjoining room. The entire space is filled with segmented bins that contain drawer pulls and doorknobs. Like a magpie, you are drawn to the sparkling glass knobs, which appear to come in every color of the rainbow. Most of the kitchens you have seen have ordinary knobs in white or a silver color. But seeing these lovely glass ones reminds you that it's very easy to change out your cabinet knobs. You ponder the possibilities as you sort through the bins. You find glass knobs in blue, pink, and amber and turn them in a sunbeam to see the light refract on the wall. The large doorknobs are also intriguing. Some are plain and round and others are more octagonal. They come in different finishes and are for different types of doors. Your friend points out that you could choose three or four and mount them on a board on the wall rack as a coat rack. Exiting the small room, you find you are in what was once the entryway. There's a front desk there, and two people are behind it ringing up purchases and chatting with customers. Next to the desk is a narrow set of stairs that leads to the next level of the house. You step carefully up the stairs, running your hand along the smooth, white, wooden rail. You notice that someone has painted one word on each stair riser. As you ascend, it says, More to see up here. You reach the landing at the top and find you are in a hallway with four spaces that must have once and bedrooms. Entering the first, you see you have found the display of vintage clothing. Hanging on rolling racks, you see dresses and skirts covered in faded lace. There's also a clothing bar with some fur coats and well-worn leather purses. On a shelf nearby, you note there are bold vintage bracelets hanging in a row on one shelf, and beneath it, some clip-on earrings and elegant-looking narrow belts. Over by the window, 
you see a collection of vintage hats. You can't resist stopping near some pillbox-style ones with blusher veils. You pick up one that is yellow silk and turn it around in your hands. Your friend suggests, with a smile, that its owner probably wore a triple-strand pearl necklace as well. Leaving the room of hats and dresses, you proceed through a door to an adjoining area that is full of books. Only a few of them are classics you recognize. Others appear to be grammar primers for long-ago students or cookbooks you've never heard of. One professes to be the book of manners for children. Over by the window, there is a bin containing vintage magazines. Each one is protected by a smooth plastic sleeve. You look through half of the stack and marvel at the cover stories from decades ago. They cover topics ranging from fashion to current events. It's strange to see history playing out as a headline on each of the news magazines. You hadn't even noticed that your friend had disappeared until they stick their head through the doorway from the next room and tell you to come look at something. You put the magazines back in order and walk into the next room, which is full of toys. There are numerous wind-up robots and cars. You gingerly turn the knob on one little vehicle and release it briefly on a table. It drives merrily across and stops after going a few inches. On a shelf nearby, there is a wooden duck that clacks when you pull it with a string. There are a few more books here. Most of them are fairy tales or children's stories. In the corner is a well-loved wooden rocking horse with an antique teddy bear seated on its back. The entire room is a reminder of a simpler time, and being in it makes you feel happy. The fourth room on this floor is full of dressers and mirrors. Some of the dressers are recently refinished, and others could use a good coat of paint. Full and half-length mirrors stand here and there, reflecting each other. The effect is to create a feeling of infinite doorways and infinite numbers of dressers. You watch yourself multiply as you step from one place in the room to another. After leaving this room of reflections, your friend suggests that 
Since the entire third floor is more furniture, the two of you, instead, go outside to see what's in the vendor stalls. You agree. You certainly aren't planning on returning home with any large furniture today. You carefully descend the front stairs, past the front desk, and exit the house through the front door. Once you get to the bottom of the porch steps, you pass back through the cafe courtyard. You cross it and find yourselves following an enticing path of irregularly shaped stone pavers to a large, open greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse is a wide variety of vintage outdoor decorations. There is a pair of stately stone lions to your right. One of them has a chipped paw, but they are otherwise very grand-looking. As you circle the greenhouse, you are relieved to sit down on an inviting stone bench. Your friend stops next to you, and you both gaze appreciatively around the area. Taking in carved stone bird baths, elegant fountains, and hanging wind chimes. The fragrant afternoon breeze is drifting gently through the garden area, causing the chimes to play a soothing, ethereal tune. The fresh air is lovely after the old wood scent in the interior of the house. Almost reluctantly, you rise from the bench and walk around the other side of the greenhouse, admiring large stone planters along the way. There is a coat tree that has been hung with all types of artificial wreaths. Some are very summery, and others hint more at autumn or the holiday season. Better yet, a little way ahead, you see a troop of whimsical garden gnomes. They have all been gathered by the owners of the shop to offer an easy selection for any lawn ornament enthusiast. One of the gnomes stands proudly with a large walking stick. Another one, with a red hat, stands simply with his feet wide and his hands behind his back. A third one is wearing a green hat and lies sleeping on a spotted toadstool. You almost yawn just looking at him. A nap sounds lovely, you think? You've seen the entire garden house, so you head toward the outdoor stalls to see what treasures you'll find there. As you near this long, open-air aisle of three-walled rooms, you pass a long line of wooden doors in different sizes and colors. They are leaning against a fence, 
just waiting for the right buyer to select the perfect one. Some are stained wood, while others are in various stages of peeling paint. There is a red door that is showing white paint underneath. Next to it is a blue door with white trim around the insets. Your favorite one is a very fancy looking red door with ironwork covering a large glass window. There is an elaborate design carved on the solid lower half of the door. It looks like it came from a grand old Victorian mansion. While you've been admiring the doors, your friend has wandered ahead and is examining a small area. It contains two antique typewriters, a bookshelf, a large farmhouse sink, and a metal medicine cabinet. These outdoor spaces are much more jumbled because each booth belongs to a single seller. Your friend carefully opens and closes the medicine cabinet as if they're imagining it in their bathroom at home. If they did want to refurbish their bathroom, they'd also have a selection of clawfoot tubs to choose from nearby. There are two. One is white all over and has silver-colored legs. The other has been painted a bronze shade on the outside. Both tubs look like they would be extremely heavy to transport. Your friend suggests that either one would make a fantastic garden planter, and you agree. You step into another nearby stall and gaze at a large collection of glass bottles. Some of them are clear, and some are blue. Some have no lid, and others have a stopper attached. Next to them, on a table, is an old-fashioned kitchen scale. You press it lightly with your hand and watch the dial swing gently and then return to its resting place. Moving on, next to the scale, you find an umbrella stand with a few beautifully carved wooden walking sticks standing in it. You pick up each walking stick in turn, admiring their smooth curves. One is a natural honey color, and the other two are a richer, darker brown. You carefully replace them. Ducking into the next booth, you see your friend examining a bucket of old metal house numbers. Most of them are black and weathered, and some of them are tangled together. Your friend laughs as they pick up a string of numbers 
all hanging from each other like keys on a ring. You scan the rest of the booth and spot a trusty little red wagon in the corner. It has some minor rust on it now, but you can imagine how it once must have made its little owner proud. It probably carried around all manner of things, like stuffed bears, colorful wooden blocks, and dolls. Above the metal wagon, there is a square of stained glass hanging from a support beam in the ceiling. It has a red and blue geometric pattern and is about eight by eight inches across. You are oddly charmed by this pretty piece of glass and stand there pondering where you might hang it at home. You can imagine a few places, but you're not sure. Still, you have that feeling you get when you just know you'll regret passing up something you love. That settles it. This stained glass is going home with you. Your friend helps you remove the hook from the low-hanging rafter in the ceiling, and you decide you will take it inside the house and pay for it. You and your friend take a leisurely stroll back to the entryway with the cash register and wait while the people at the counter carefully wrap your stained glass treasure and put it in a bag. They smile broadly at you and thank you for coming. You find yourself gladly nodding your thanks in response. You find your friend wandering the porch and both agree that you could use a snack. Luckily, there's no line at the bakery truck you saw earlier. You head over to the truck and examine the menu, each settling on an iced coffee and deciding to split an enormous chocolate chip muffin. While you wait for your order, you look around for a good place to sit. There are plenty of empty tables since the afternoon is growing late. You choose a spot under a sweet little trellis in the corner. The two of you sit down and divide the muffin between you. Grateful to be off your feet after your long wanderings through the antique market. You take slow bites through the light coating of sugar crystals on the crumbling muffin and savor the semi-sweet chocolate hidden inside. It's exactly the kind of treat you were looking for. The sun is getting lower in the sky, but you feel as if the entire world has slowed down as the day progresses. From where you are sitting, 
You can see some people working to carry a table down the front steps of the porch. They are laughing as they turn the table this way and that, trying not to inconvenience each other or run into the porticos. Behind them, a couple of friends each carry two chairs. It looks like they may have purchased an entire dining set. You lean back in your chair and take a deep breath, smelling the scent of fresh cut grass and delicate blooms that fills the air around you. You stretch your legs out long in front of you and tilt your face back. It meets the dappled sunshine that filters down through the trellis above. You feel as if you could stay here forever. listening to the gentle hum of conversation in the background. After a long and companionable silence, you and your friend both stir. Your muffin has been eaten, and you realize you should probably get on the road. So you rise, carrying what's left of your refreshing iced coffee and your bag with the stained glass diamond. Strolling ever so slowly, you make your way back to the car. You pull onto the two-lane road and head in the direction of home. The cubes of your drink rattle ever so slightly in the cup holder next to you as the car, once again, drives lightly over the cracks in the road. The wheels make a hypnotic bumping sound it's even more soothing combined with the bird song you hear through your half open window. You lean your head back on the headrest and turn your face to the side, watching the rolling pastures unfold next to you. Your mind wanders as the miles slip by. And you ponder where you might hang your stained glass diamond. Perhaps over the sink in the kitchen, so you could look at it while you were cooking. Or maybe it would be lovely in the bedroom window. After a while, you realize you are too sleepy to give this matter any serious thought. So you resolve to settle it tomorrow. Your friend switches on the radio and turns it to a classical music station. A string quartet is playing a soothing piece that you can't quite place, but it's so lovely. With your eyes still closed, you breathe the floral-scented air deeply, and then... Exhale it. 
feeling totally relaxed. With the sun on your face and the humming of the car all around, you slowly drift off to sleep.